Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Wrecked Capital with this brand new tweet. If 56,000 was not the bottom, then this current pullback will have officially equaled the longest retrace in this cycle at 63 days. But guys, you know what just happened? Bitcoin just started to rally. Check that out. So he continues by saying, history, however, suggests that this current pullback ended at 56,000 and 47 days. Wrecked Capital has denoted this correction over here on the chart that I've been showing uh, over the last few days. And guys, take a look. It's looking like somebody's breathing life into Bitcoin. Over the last few hours, we have seen Bitcoin rally. Yesterday it was trading uh, in and around $60,000. So we were hovering in and around 60,000. It felt like uh, anything below that, i.e. 59,000 buyers were just buying up. So we were just seeing Bitcoin pretty much just kind of hover in this space. And then over the last few hours, as of the time of this recording, we are now seeing uh, a bit of a price move up for Bitcoin. Uh, this last hour has seen a bit of a correction uh, probably because we've seen Bitcoin now move up significantly over those last few hours. So uh, almost 4% uh, or actually about 4% over those last few hours. So a bit of a retracement now looking like Bitcoin is trying to get back up to this level in and around here. So uh, that would be around 63,000 today. As of the time of this recording, we're seeing Bitcoin now hovering in around 62.6. So it's looking like maybe he is correct. $56,000 for Bitcoin is the lowest for this particular retracement. Uh, let me throw this back on the daily for you guys. You guys can see even the lows are starting to rebound back up. So lower lows, we are not seeing uh, that anymore. Hopefully this is the lowest we're going to go. But that next level that we have to break past uh, he's saying in and around here, $64,000 per coin. If I zoom in, let me throw that on the four hour chart. I'd like to see Bitcoin get above this wick up here, uh, in and around 65,005. If I were to be honest and then not uh, break this level up in here, which would be 67.1 at that point, uh, I feel like we would be on our way. Of course, sentiment is creeping up slowly. Bitcoin in the last 24 hours is up 2.45%. That is bringing, uh, some coins up along with it, albeit uh, not all of the crypto space, but some coins are chugging away following the Bitcoin trend. Uh, Bitcoin Cash is up 0.86. We've got uh, the NEAR protocol, that's up 0.76. Uh, LEO is up 1.52. So some altcoins are following the trend. At this moment, XRP is still down in the last 24 hours, 0.26. So uh, just hovering around 50 cents per coin, unfortunately. Uh, XRP, look at that, rebounding a little bit, but still... Not really uh, much to write home about when it comes to, uh, well, the altcoin market at this particular moment. Here's what Ali thinks, okay, if Bitcoin can reclaim 64,200 as support, it is likely to rise towards 76,006. Now, what he's saying, Bitcoin has to reclaim 64 as support. So uh, essentially getting up past this level here and uh, creating new support above that $64,000 level, then it will likely go up past 76,000. So breaching that all time high. However, if it fails to surpass 64,290, BTC might retest support at $51,000. I don't think, uh, or rather I have a very sneaking suspicion that that is unlikely. Remember he did post this yesterday before we did see that recent pump. So I'm hoping we will see the former rather than the latter Bitcoin forming support in and around here, $64,000. Peter Brandt here also bringing up uh, something that's, uh, well, not terribly well thought through from a pure, pure classical charting point of view. Uh, and th he gives the example here. This chart looks like it is headed towards zero. This is the XRP to BTC chart. And as I've told you guys in the past, uh, you know, this chart really denotes when XRP is going to pump. If we look up XRP to BTC, uh, what we generally tend to find here, let me throw this on the weekly for you guys to get a better sense there is that once we do get into this zone, at that point there, XRP does start to pump. Now, how long it's going to take is still anyone's guess. This is again, the weekly chart. So we did see it back in December of 2020. Now this was around the lawsuit. So this was a bit of an anomaly. And then finally, we did dip back down into this zone back in March, 2021. And that's when XRP saw its interyear high of $1.96. Uh, finally in April of 2021. So compared to Bitcoin, we are continuing to keep an eye on this chart too. Also notice the very long candlesticks, long, uh, long red and green candlesticks there. So very volatile at that moment in time. Right now, what we're seeing, if we compare it, we're not seeing the volatility guys. So crypto market still has to pick back up, I think, before we start to see those big moves to the upside. Even coming into this trend here, you guys can see XRP to BTC. They're very 
short um, candlesticks with not a lot of price movement. So not a lot of volatility, very, very different than what we saw back in 2020 and 2021. So once we do see the market pick up again, chances are we are going to see this move to the upside. And so, uh, you know, to Peter Brandt's point, nah, not going to zero. That's just my interpretation of things. XRP Crypto Wolf bringing this up. Now guys, millions of XRP has moved as the market does hold its breath. So we are seeing investors buying up cheap XRP at this moment. In the last 24 hours, an intriguing movement of 19 million XRP has been spotted, stirring discussions amid a period of price suspense. As the cryptocurrency market navigates through a phase of anticipation and speculation, a notable transaction involving 19 million XRP has captured the attention of the crypto community. This substantial movement worth millions of dollars raises questions about the intentions behind the transfer and its implications for the market. So the XRP transfer was from BitGet, a Seychelles-based cryptocurrency exchange to Binance. So it does not sound like this was for uh, ODL or for any kind of market purpose. It does sound like a whale transaction. Whale Alert did report on this. So it's 19.859 million XRP. That is worth about $10 million USD. And that was transferred from BitGet, the Seychelles company, uh, to the Binance exchange. It would make sense for hefty investors to still be purchasing XRP at this moment. I mean, we've had quite a bit of opportunity here. And even since uh, the bottom of the market, when XRP did reach, what was it, 28 cents, give or take, uh, we're still up uh, from that point about 65%. But guys, 65% is not a lot in the grand scheme of things. So I could see it, you know, as Ripple gets closer and closer and XRP closer and closer to being used uh, in the real world for real utility purposes, investors are now speculating and uh, really paying attention, deciding now, okay, where should I put my dollars? Where do I see the most value being in the cryptocurrency market? And um, I think, again, as uh, Paul Barron was saying the other day, a sleeping giant just based on, uh, well, not only the partnerships and the setup there, but also the overall picture globally. So there's another indication there. $10 million investment uh, in XRP being moved from one exchange to another. Wanted to thank XRP Crypto Wolf for pointing that out. What else is on the docket, guys? Well, today, May the 13th, uh, this is uh, with regards to the SEC lawsuit. Parties and any third parties are now to file the omnibus letter motions to seal all materials related to the remedies related briefing, including briefs, declarations, and supporting exhibits. Parties and any third parties also file proposed redactions to such materials. And then May the 20th, parties and any third parties file letter briefs in opposition to omnibus letter motions to seal. And then at the very latest, before Monday, May the 27th, under the joint proposals, the party would further be required to file public redacted versions of all documents within 14 days of the court's ruling on the omnibus sealing motions. And, uh, you know, we are hearing murmurings that we're probably going to get a final, final verdict by July, uh, anywhere between July and September 2024. I detailed that in a video I did uh, a couple of weeks ago that I will post up here in the top right hand corner. So that's the latest with regards to the legal schedule. Wanted to thank Jack the Rippler for posting that. Now, James Murphy also commented on the $2 billion fine against Ripple, this one courtesy of Michael Branch. A major development rocks the XRP world, an XRP lawyer is making headlines, hinting at a potential game changer in Ripple's ongoing battle with the SEC. The news, a judge might reject the SEC's crippling $2 billion fine against Ripple. Could this be the turning point XRP hodlers have been waiting for? Well, James Murphy, the pro XRP lawyer known as Meta Law Man, believed that Judge Torres might reject the SEC's $2 billion fine. Murphy questions the SEC's arguments that institutional investors suffered financial harm, challenging the validity of their request for disgorgement. So it just stems upon this, uh, this whole point here. If institutional investors were not harmed, and for that matter, I mean, even retail investors were harmed, ironically, because of the SEC's actions in quote unquote, them trying to protect investors, we were harmed because of the SEC. Well, then, you know, it wouldn't make sense for the judge to move forth with this. The SEC claims that institutional investors who paid a lower discount for XRP suffered from an inflated price, constituting pecuniary harm. However, Murphy doubts the interpretation of the facts in the case, suggesting a misreading of the Second Circuit statement in SEC versus Govell. So that was uh, the precedent setting case that they are going by now. Uh, Meta Lawman, just uh, with this post, will the judge go with the eye fresh reasoning and find that institutional investors in Ripple suffered harm? It is possible, but he is saying ultimately not likely in his opinion. 
So I think that would also uh, lend some, um, if not uh, a real meaningful reason why price should move, at least the sentiment uh, surrounding XRP specifically will be higher. And I think uh, more people will have confidence buying into XRP if we finally, when, if we finally do get that final verdict. I mean, the landscape in the US is just not very favorable to cryptocurrency at this point in time. Mark Cuban even uh, commenting here, criticizing Gensler and Warren. Gary Gensler could have taken the same road as Japan to protect crypto investors. Japan learned from Mt. Gox and other failures and adapted to protect investors. The Japanese versions of these particular exchanges did survive in Japan, whereas in the United States, they did not survive. And even John Deaton coming out and uh, making a comment about this. Let me place it in perspective, the incredibly important point that Mark is making. Japan was one of the countries that declared XRP not a security, yet the SEC, without any support in the law, declared XRP itself a security. In the complaint, the SEC went as far as to say that if foreign government declared XRP a currency, it would still be a security. Imagine the arrogance of the US regulators trying to usurp the sovereignty of a foreign nation. That's our SEC at work. And it wasn't only in Japan, it was in uh, Switzerland, Singapore, the United Kingdom, the UAE, and others. They all classified XRP as a non-security token. I represented users and holders from each of those countries, including many who'd never heard of Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse, or Chris Larson. It's kind of difficult to rely on the efforts and promises of a company or individuals you've never heard of. And so uh, he brings up the 75,000 XRP holders that he represented in that uh, secondary court case to the SEC lawsuit. Judge Torres cited to the affidavits uh, I offered in the case, as well as my efforts in the library case, uh, representing independent journalist Naomi Brockwell as well. So never tell me one person can't make a difference, John Deaton says, or we can't win against government overreach. We did. And so he's taking this opportunity again to say, vote for him. You can go to John Deaton for Senate.com to uh, give a donation if you guys can afford it. I will link this in the description of the video for you. We need more people in crypto like John Deaton, and I cannot reiterate this enough. Uh, even if you do not reside in the United States, it is important to understand how big this is and how um, much territory this encompasses, uh, you know, XR, it, it, cryptocurrency is a global phenomenon and the United States an influential player in this story. So, you know, as we see more crypto adoption, trust me, guys, once we do see clarity in the United States, it's going to get really, really crazy. And this is why, you know, I'm thinking XRP all time high, going to get blown out of the water. What did we see? $3.30 in 2018. If you want a more detailed perspective of what my targets are going to be for XRP, and if you also want to take a look at some of the other cryptocurrencies I'm trading, you can find all that at patreon.com slash working money channel. It is only $5 a month, and I've purposely made it affordable so that you guys can follow me throughout this bull run. I think things are uh, slowly getting set up to really kind of thrive by the end of 2024 and into 2025. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to thank John Dean and Mark Cuban for posting that. So Dark Defender, um, you know, kind of bringing it all together here. The case for Ripple came to an end. That was dot number one. Dot number two, we're waiting on Judge Torres's decision now. Dot three, the CEO of Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse, said on the uh, said on the 10th of May, it is clear that the U.S. government is going after Tether. So that was another point that um, I think is really interesting. You know, sometimes these guys just say things and then they miraculously happen out of the blue, quote unquote, out of the blue. Because they know what's what's going on behind the scenes, guys. Now, let me continue. Dot four. Meanwhile, XUSD or USDX, whatever you want to call it, as a stablecoin is being prepared to run on the XRP ledger. So that will be Ripple's stablecoin. Dot number five. Some BTC maxis started meddling with XRP and spreading fear as they did just before the 2017 bull run. So, you know, even by just seeing that too, we know that something's probably up. I recommend them not to meddle with the things they don't understand. Dot number six, the CEO of BlackRock, Larry Fink, recently said that tokenization will be the next generation for markets. I would like to add blockchain will be used in everything. So just remember that. Dot seven, although the case is continuing for the public sales of XRP, we have a solid decision that XRP is not a security. So guys, that means XRP has been given legal clarity. XRP is in the grand wave number three. And so number nine, dot number nine, the final dot. Well, what is going to happen next? I just wanted to go back to, uh, you know, what BlackRock CEO Larry Fink did say about tokenization and how we're seeing Ripple set up their strategy. Now, they just purchased a bunch of companies. One of their acquisitions was Standard Custody and Trust Company. That strengthens their regulatory portfolio, enabling secure digital asset custody that could unlock the $10 trillion of institutional money by 2030. Listen to this. Due to the increasing institutional adoption of digital assets, 
the digital custody market is becoming quite saturated, most commentators say. So how can Ripple stay ahead in this particular race? Well, I see it probably a bit differently. I don't think the market is saturated at all. Uh, I do think the crypto market opportunity is quite large and even growing bigger as we speak mm -hmm. um, because major global institutional players are still leaning into crypto and, and developing yeah. quite heavily on it, especially thinking about fundamental in infrastructure services like custody, payments or also tokenization. Mm -hmm. Um, the amount of crypto assets custodied is expected to reach about 10 trillion by 2030. Or if you think about it differently, um, for example, Northern Trust and HSBC anticipated that up to 10% of all financial assets will be tokenized by 2030. Wow. Most of this adoption will actually be driven by institutional players and they will need a, a place to safely store and manage mm. or orchestrate assets and they need the technologies for that. And mm. through custody, um, through the custody technology offering of Ripple, we will be able to provide those customers uh, a tech stack where they can build on to actually bring their services then to market. Mm. And Ripple is quite well positioned as it is the leading enterprise solution provider in the space. Uh, with a very strong crypto DNA, but with also this very strong history of building with institutional players in the market. So that was Katrin Collar, guys, the head of custody product at Ripple, giving us some insight on, uh, you know, the tokenization of cryptocurrencies, how we're going to see $10 trillion being unlocked in institutional uh, in the institutional crypto market by the year 2030. And Ripple is ready, set to go with that. Now, on top of that, guys, we just got word that Infinite Block, a company out of Korea, has announced that they will also be participating on the XRP ledger. This one courtesy of Bank XRP. So the XRPL is an open source decentralized protocol, as we know. Currently, Ripple Labs and the XRPL foundation and xrpl labs are operating the xrpl ecosystem and now guys hot off the press from korea infinite block a vasp licensed custody company in south korea is now running a validator on the xrp ledger now why this is important guys the interesting thing that uh, kashta actually did find out is that it's not just for them okay it's not just for their particular company read the underlying section a couple of times this one courtesy of kashta 9 Check this out. Infinite Block, Korea's leading digital asset custody company, has joined the XRP Ledger ecosystem as a validator. Infinite Block is the only business that received a VASP report or VASP report acceptance last year and plans to participate in the XRPL governance, expanding the ecosystem and providing XRP services to corporations. So let me repeat again. Providing XRP services to corporations, I'm guessing in, uh, well, Korea specifically, but in the Asia region more broadly. And guys, that's XRP services. This is not a Ripple affiliated company. This is them doing it independently, running a validator and providing, what could it be? XRP liquidity, perhaps, to other businesses and corporations in Asia. So when we're looking at, you know, these numbers here, $10 trillion, institutional money, how Ripple's setting themselves up for the custody situation. And then we have BCB Group guys affiliated with Medico. And here's what their CEO just said the other day. Listen to this. For me, out of 10, uh, six to 12 months scale, I think I'm... Um... For me, out of 10, uh, 6 to 12 months scale, I think um, a solid 9.5. And I don't think that's priced into uh, the market yet. And I say that not to diminish the trauma that uh, we've faced in so many ways, markets up and down, companies uh, coming and going. But in the fact that despite the relentless near-death experience, Celsius, Riera, Terra Luna, FTX, Silvergate Signature, we're here. And um, every monster we slay makes it easier to slay the next one. Uh, so I'm very positive about the direction because it is clear, I hope, to everyone here that this is a one-way street. That the upgrade of money and economy and how we do things is uh, one way, uh, but it's a little bumpy on the way. But I'm encouraged that we're here and that uh, every one of these crises gives us the tools to deal with the next. Everyone here that this is a one way. And um, every monster we slay makes it easier to slay the next one. Uh, so I'm very positive about the direction because it is clear, I hope, to everyone here that this is a one-way street, that the upgrade of money and economy and how we do things is uh, one way, uh, but it's a little bumpy on the way.
there is going to be an upgrade to money. It's going to be bumpy along the way. And again, guys, just wanted to point out that BCB Group did move custody of their digital asset operations to Medico, now owned by Ripple. Even though we're going to see some bumps along the way, guys, obviously the tools are put in place. The companies that will thrive are already getting ready to utilize the best crypto digital asset there is to move all this money. But that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.